any idea what time it is? About five to seven. They will question you. And if they determine you have no use to them, they will shoot you. What can we do? Let's sit down and fasten my seatbelt. Ready? Steve, it's good to see you back. Good to have you back with us again. Thank you, Jules. With us today, ladies and gentlemen, a man whose physical strength would confound, would amaze, would overwhelm us all. Who are you? Oh, you mean my name? No, no. Names are only labels the outside world attaches meanings to. Who are you? I, uh, don't know. Your name? My name? Oh, I forget. But it'll come back to me. Who are you? We're going to try it one more time. Now, I am losing my patience with you. Who are you? Forget it. Who are you? Well, I'm Steve Austin. And where are the others? Well, I'm afraid you're stuck with me, sir. You don't mind me calling you Steve, do you? No. Who are you? Just what are you doing here? You know, you're probably not going to believe this, but my friend and I came here to do a little mountain climbing. Who are you? I'm Steve Austin, doctor. I'm here from Washington. They sent one man? Well, things are a little tight, sir. You know, with inflation and budget cuts. Where have you been? Oh, I felt like taking a walk. Where did you come from? I don't know. What are you doing? How did you get here? Well, I, uh, I just dropped in to talk to the man in charge. Who sent you? Did you ever get the feeling that you'd been somewhere before? Sure, lots of times. <laughs> yeah, that is a funny feeling, all right. You know, the French have a word for it. Deja vu. Your name, what? Austin, Steve Austin. What are you doing here? Well, I came to get my truck back. If I lose it, it comes out of my check. What's the trouble? No trouble. I'm looking for old cars. Old cars? Yes, I collect them. Colonel, what are you doing here? Well, I'm very good at climbing up and down walls. How, how did you get in? Uh, my door is very, very locked. Window. Well, what are you doing here? Well, I guess I'm not supposed to be. Not after that tree you dropped on me. Us? You're supposed to be. I, I mean, how did you get... I'll tell you about it later. Who sent you? Oh, lady, please. Who are you really? Steve Miller, America's number two ranked amateur heavyweight. Let's see your ID. Well, I must have left it in my other suit. What your rank? Military object. I'm not attached to the military. Lie! Let's see your ID. Yours! You wear uniform from American military! Who are you? Colonel Austin, Air Force. I gotta get into that plane. You know how to fly? It's too late now, isn't it? You're an American. That's right. Your rank. Colonel. Hmm. Colonel Austin? It is Colonel Austin. What about it, Sergeant? I thought I recognized you. American. Right. And you? American. You mind telling me your name? Steve Austin. Haven't we met before? I don't think so. Hey, gang, I want you to meet a chum of mine. He's a super <laughs> astronaut, pool shark, right? Well, Football hero, and I trust him with my life. This is Steve Austin. Hi. Hi. Hi, Steve. Steve Austin. Now you know your name and who you are. That's what I'm told. Austin. Weren't you an uh, astronaut or something? That's right. Did you go into space? Well, I went to the moon. A man who has walked on other worlds. Space. It is the final frontier. Are you the Colonel Austin who walked on the moon? That's right. What's well, the fellow who walked on the moon doing out here in the middle of Africa? Mr. Splashdown? I came in for the film. Have you ever been to Hollywood? Oh, yes, ma'am, I've been. Are you in the cinema? No, sir. My name is Steve Austin. Well, I did a little filming on the moon once, but... You. 
fly through space, to the moon. Hm? Yes. And you walk on moon. Look, I know it's a little hard for you to believe. You biggest liar on Earth. That's what I believe. What about you? Haven't heard much about you since you walked on the moon. What have you been up to? Oh, this and that. What have you been up to since you raised all that dust on the moon? Oh, nothing much. Uh, Colonel Austin, if you don't mind my asking, what was the moon actually like? Well, have you ever been in the middle of Wyoming on a clear night? What's it like out there, anyway? And space, I mean. It's, uh, it's, it's quiet. Uh, peaceful and exciting all at the same time. You another one of them dum-dums? Oh, I snuck into a few classes here at MIT, Professor. Steve is taking advanced science classes at, uh, at other universities as well, Doctor. Him? I thought he was a football player. That too. Hey, you were an All-American quarterback, right? Yeah. Yeah, in, in one game, I remember, against, uh, against Tennessee, you recovered five fumbles and you went for touchdowns four out of the five, right? <laughs> well, it's nice of you to leave out the fact that three of the fumbles were my own. What was the last game we played together? Well, that'd be the championship game our senior year. Oh, yeah, I remember that. The night before, we went over about midnight, hung all those signs in front of Stowe High School about how bad we are going to beat them. They got so riled up, they beat us 60 to nothing. Hey, old buddy, it's about time you came by to see us. Well, I hadn't needed a tune-up until now. Tune-up, huh? You or your car? What brought you home? Well, I heard you were here. Liar. What'd you have for breakfast anyway, cowboy? Uh, roasted marshmallows. Yeah, well, where's the pizza? Uh, to tell you the truth, I couldn't remember whether you said light on the cheese and heavy on the anchovies or heavy on the cheese and light on the anchovies. Just what are you looking for? My father. Tell me about your father. He died when I was two. All my mother ever said was that he was a pilot killed in World War II in action. Say, how's your mom? Oh, she's fine. Just like always, you know, growing flowers and teaching Sunday school. Your mother, uh, she didn't hear from your father since the war, did she? No. Heman says you are not like other humans. What I saw you do today, no ordinary man can do. So? Radiation. You set off sensor alarms. There's something different about you. What is it? That's my accent. I feel the scars of your accident. They rebuilt your body. You are more than human. Bionic. I'm not so sure I'm comfortable with your telepathy. You registered a nuclear reading on our scanner screen. I want to know what makes you tick. You're a very strange, very interesting person. What could I say? Can't you tell me? Well, look, I had an accident a little while ago. When they put me back together, I was better than before, okay? When I think of all the planes you tested, it was a miracle you walked away from that horrible crash. Well, I guess I was lucky, Mom. Well, when I heard about that accident of yours, I, I wondered if you'd ever come through it alive. That was some bailing wire and a little glue. They finally got me back together. <laughs> How did it happen? What? The accident. Well, I was uh, testing a space shuttle. And it crashed. Rocket arm switch is on. Here comes the throttle. Circuit breakers in. We have separation. We've got a blowout. Number three. Flight calm. I can't hold it. She's breaking up. When I came to, they were replacing some of my parts with bionic limbs. A cybernetic organism. Part machine, part human being. The cyborg. If something like that would have happened to me, I would have flipped. I almost did. Steve, how has it affected you? What does it feel like? It feels just peachy, Doctor. They're not gods, you know. Tell it to them. We always try to imitate nature. Do her one better. Why is that? I guess because it's there. How will it feel? It'll be a little spooky at first, but you'll get used to it. You said that after the accidents, there were some parts missing. Which ones? Both legs, right arm, this eye. 
Is our bionic eye still working? Yeah. An eye? Which one? You tell me. And the left eye, well, it's totally discolored. Is it artificial? Yes. The eye, I suppose, is uh, infrared with a uh, 10, 12 to 1 zoom? 20. How can you see where you're going? I eat a lot of carrots. Did you see him spot that footprint at 200 yards? Well, how'd you know? Let's just say I got an eye for details. The mechanism in your eye enabled you to see the truth. What are you? Just a man who knows what he sees. How fast can you run? Um, 35, 40? I've hit 60. Man, nobody can run that fast. What are you, anyway? What's your security clearance? What's, what's that got to do with it? I'm a fire. I'm sorry, I'm classified six. How do you do it? You were doing 66. Well, you know as well as I do. Better. That arm, those legs of his will do anything, absolutely anything, as mine tells him to. No, I mean, how do you know when your stride is right? Well, I can feel a sort of natural rhythm in my upper body. How did you get here? We left before oh. you. Oh. Well, I know a shortcut. That's how you could get away from the police. That's right. Uh, thanks for saving my life, but would you mind telling me how you did it? Did what? Jumped across the room like that? I laid a lot of jumping beans. How are you able to do that? Vitamins. Not a bad trick. But what do you say to this? I'd say don't do that. But Gerda, how did you do that? Well, sometimes that potato vodka does more for you than just give you a headache. How'd you manage it? How'd you take that electricity? I, could, I couldn't move. Well, my arm, it's not quite my own. But I must know how. That's a military secret. By the way, what is it with your arm? What? Your arm. I saw a knife go in and a knife come out, and I saw no blood. Now, that's unreal, man. Oh, yeah, well, uh, you see, I had an accident. Uh, I lost an arm. I replaced it with an artificial one. What happened? <sighs> it doesn't matter, does it? What I want to know is, how did you get that engine out of there? I had an accident about a year ago, and when they put me back together, they didn't have all my original parts. So they put me back together with a few improved parts. Improvements? Electronic, mechanical. Bionics. How'd you know? Then it has to be atomic powered. That's right. You have a Geiger counter in your arm. It came with the equipment. Never thought I'd have a use for it, though. One of Rudy Wells' quick inventions. He put a sensor device in your bionic arm, right? When my hand passes over a microprocessor circuit, I get a flashing blue light in my bionic eye. Well, I guess my antennae are always out. Your what? My antennae. Seems like I'm always picking up signals. I didn't know you had antennae. Well, how will we track you? We can't let you or the reflector fuse out of our sight. Look, when Dr. Rudy Wells put me back together, he made provisions for a beeper right here. All we have to do is plug one in. These, these improvements, were they, were they bionic? Hey, old buddy, you're, you're kind of special. That's what they keep saying. Your arm is that way too, huh? Yeah. This is the one. Your arm's bionic. Two years ago, I was part of an experiment that Oscar and Rudy tried. So far, it's worked. We're the beginning of a whole new species. Yeah. How did you do that? Well, Senator, two years ago, you got Oscar Goldman six million dollars for a secret project. I was that project. Would you do your experiment over again? You bet. Uh, Steve, about those improvements, what about them? Do they come in black? Well? Well what? How did you do that? It's all in the wrist. You he hit that ball in the next week. Yeah, I guess I did kind of catch it on the screws, didn't I? It was 100, wasn't it, Pard? Who are you taking lessons from? No lessons. I just learned to keep my eye on the ball.
You're a genius. How'd you figure that out? Part of my checkered past. How did you do that? I mean, what makes it work? Hey, are you always the reporter? How did you recognize him in the dark like that? Well, I eat a lot of carrots. <clears throat> and you caught it with one arm. How? Well, two hands are for beginners. How do you do that? With just one hand? Leverage. That's amazing. How did you do that? All it takes is a little elbow grease. How did you know which box contained the chips? Oh, I'm psychic. How'd you know? I saw it in a movie once. I still don't understand. How did you get out of that cell? Never mind. How did you stop the cab? Am I ruining my best pair of boots? Are you going to carry the aeroplane motor all the way there by yourself? I'll manage. You lean on that 38 much, do you? As little as possible. How did you get free? Well, it's an old Indian trick. How, how could you do all this? I don't have time to give you another demonstration. I got a bicycle to fix. You moved that like it didn't take any effort. Huh? Oh, I used to do a lot of weightlifting in college. Well, Mr. Olson, you are probably just as curious as I am. Yeah, about what? About how strong you really are. You show amazing strength, Colonel Austin. No, well, I keep in shape. You outran horses. Your strength. Your strength is incredible. Just who are you? I'm just a man. Not an ordinary one. Where would you say the scales would tip? Are you stronger than two men? Three? Four? Well, I hate to brag. Of course, of course, of course. Don't your legs ever run out from under you? Not anymore. Are you all right? Sure, I'm fine. But nobody can survive that. Your bionic legs. Hey, you now bionics don't help you when you're climbing mountains, remember? You didn't use a hammer. Won't you need one? I don't think so. You know, I always expected there were a few guys like you around. Yeah, where? Playing for Pittsburgh. Hey, mean Joe Cream, man. One time he grabbed me right by the Barry. Shh. I hate to spoil your fun. But the Indians say that any man that can outrun a horse and overpower a beast is a demon. I know what the Indians say. What kind of a devil are you? I'm a man, just like you. What are you? I'm just like you, Andy, a human being, except I have some electronic and mechanical parts. Have you ever broken a man's hand accidentally, you know, uh, shaking hands? No, but I've crushed a few water glasses. Did you burn your hand? No, I didn't feel a thing. You've uh, got a pretty good grip. Well, it comes from squeezing my own orange juice. Both legs are bionic. And this eye. Did he hit your bionic leg or your real one? What? There's no blood in that leg. No, there's not. Sir, about the way that you got up into that plane. Oh, those Air Force exercises, Lieutenant, every morning. Thank you very much, Lieutenant. How on earth did you do it? Well, you've got your magic and I've got mine. What's under your skin? Uh, you'd be surprised. But that right hand of yours, what is it made of? Iron? Not exactly, but you're close. Don't you have to oil it or anything? <sighs> no. What do you want to prove, Colonel? that I'm more than the sum of my parts. What's underneath your shell? What am I? I... I'm not human. Well, you're not a man. You're some kind of machine. You need my arm? What are you? I'm afraid of you. I don't blame you. I'm afraid of myself sometimes. Maybe I'm just a walking computer. Just a mach machine. Mister, are you crazy too? What do you think? You weren't so nervous in the old days, Steve. It's just a coincidence. Suddenly becoming bionic. And trying to believe that you're just as much a human being as you once were. I haven't quite forgotten, Oscar. But put yourself in my place. How would you feel if you crushed coffee cups, broke Jack Handle, sent a man flying 20 feet through the air? Look, I'm doing the interview. OK. When are you going to tell me how you threw that guy so far? 
when you're old enough. You're a rat. Colonel Austin, you're a rat. Yeah, well, it doesn't make me a bad person. Are you ever going to tell me how you're able to do those things? Oh, probably not. Huh. I was going to ask you a whole lot of questions about how you can run faster than my horse. But I don't think you better tell me. But how can I help you? With your uh, ESP. I'm old enough to know what bionic means. Audrey, stop messing around in my mind. OK, OK. Well, who knows that you are bionic, Steve? I don't know. Hey, Steve, uh, do you still have those superpowers you were telling me about? Oh, wait a minute, Frank. That's supposed to be between you and I. Hard to believe. A bionic man. Well, that's not exactly common knowledge. The world is entitled to know such advanced technology as you exist. Think what that could mean. It would give hope to countless people. I gotta tell you, Howard was putting me on about a week ago, bragging about he knew everything about everything, and uh, I almost told him. Now, that's what I need, is for Cassell to know about it. How much did you cost? Six million. Too much to pay for something called science progress why 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 what oh come on i may walk like a two-year-old but i'm not that naive what are you so suspicious of look i was a civilian member of the space program for 12 years i know how much things cost now why am i worth a few million dollars and what do i have to do for it we do need a different kind of a weapon it must have superior strength stability and utter dependability and i'm the result you are the result you're employed exclusively in situations that require your unique and special attention. Now, how's that for five o'clock in the morning? That's pretty good. Flattery gets you nowhere, Oscar. Now, this is Oscar Goldman. Yes, I know. You head up the Office of Scientific Intelligence in Washington. Well, you two know each other? Oh, yes. What are you doing here in San Diego? Getting a suntan? I'll tell you, Mr. Austin. Goldie is one beautiful guy. Goldie? Oscar Goldman's the one that made you into a bionic man. Audrey? Oscar Goldman has a reputation for getting things done. Have you known him long? About a year. Is he your boss? You think so. What exactly is it that Uncle Sam expects in return? Well, I guess he wants you to be part of the team. You are a first, aren't you? Yeah, I guess so. How many people are on the team? Well, Oscar's the head coach, and uh, so far, I'm the only player. You're really very special, Colonel Austin. Are there many more like you? Yes, there's, there's a whole army of us. You and I both know that's not true, don't we? Oscar, is there anyone else like me? A simple answer? Yeah. No. Did you really think that when the great Oscar Goldman pushed one of his little buttons and ordered up you, his brand new bionic gadget, did you really think he only ordered one of a kind? Well, if that's the truth, why didn't they tell me that in Washington? <clears throat> well, because we didn't know. I mean, it took our people this long to get the truth. Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, man, doesn't Oscar Goldman tell you anything? <laughs> Sit down, Oscar. I want to talk to you. Now, don't start in with me now. Look, Oscar, I'm not one of your eager beavers, you know. Your problems aren't my problems unless you've got reasons. Reasons that make sense to me. Oscar, I don't lie to my friends. There are times when I have to lie. Now, you've got five seconds to tell me what's going on, or I'm going to start using this bionic arm you two gave me and throw you both through these walls. You want it straight? Yeah. Steve, even the bravest of men sometimes panic. They don't mean to, but they do. They look upon you as a prototype. Of course, the very nature of your assignments, what you have to do, does make you expendable. I paid my obligations above and beyond the call of duty. There is no end to obligations. They push you until they had no further use for you, and then they throw you out with the garbage. And you expected me to tell you that? My own computer tells me that your life expectancy is lousy. So what else is new? So to protect yourself, you built yourself another cyborg. 
just in case. A couple of carefully engineered deadly weapons by Mr. Oscar Goldman out of Dr. Rudy Wells. Satisfied? No. But don't sell Oscar short. He's a good man. Yeah, well, what's his limit? How far will he go to fulfill a mission? I don't think anybody knows what his limit is until he has to make that decision. You know, Doc, you haven't changed a bit. Even when you're faking, your bedside manner is terrible. Steve, you got a problem? Yeah, how do I get fired off this job? Colonel Austin, are you disobeying a direct order? Listen! You put this car down right now, you hear? Why? Because somebody will see us. Oh, well, then uh, my secret will be out and the world will know and I won't have to take any more orders from you, will I? You want me to take seven million dollars worth of bionic perfection and toss it down the drain, huh? Well, what's the matter, Stevie boy? You, uh, afraid of the competition? Hey, Steve, I'm sorry. I am really about the girl, about what we've gotten you into. Steve? You're just going to have to realize that these things happen. You can't blame yourself or the organization. Hey, what kind of game are you all playing with me? No, no game, no game, Steve. You're from Oscar Goldman's office and you're beating up federal agents. Well, I can explain that. Uh, say, but there'll be an inquiry when I make my report. So why don't you just hop in this fancy machine of yours and ease on out of town? You read me, boy? Yeah. Like a dime novel. <laughs> Listen, pal, the next time you want me on a mission, you lay it all out up front, or I'll kick your department so high you'll need Skylab to get it down. You know, one mistake and we play handball again, and you're the ball. Exactly as I say, or I'll break your neck. All right. A anything you want. I'm gonna sharpen your heels and drive you into the ground, you understand me? Yes, sir. Now you get this clown out of here before I kill him. Oscar, you're talking to a test pilot, remember? You're talking to a man who's been trained as an objective observer to pull back from any situation and look at it in the cold light of day. You're more to us, Steve, than just a man on the payroll. You're a... a six million dollar investment? I was gonna say friend. Say, you're looking pretty spiffy in those dress blues there, pal. Uh, come on, Oscar, cut the small talk. All right, I'm in government service, but what am I? What am I really? I'm just a glorified public servant. So why should I have the power to send a man to his death? But I want you to ride it out. Now, is that clear? Yeah. Thanks a heap. I'll try and forget we had this conversation, Oscar. No, that's not fair. I, I like Oscar. He's bright, he's straight. And underneath that shell of red tape, he's even got a heart. I know you, Oscar. You're not just a glorified public servant. You're a man who has to keep trying to find ways to improve things. In a way, you're a pioneer, too. Where would I be if you weren't? Have I ever let you down, pal? No, but this isn't the day to start. Do you trust me now? Yeah, well, about as far as I can throw you. Well, maybe not that far. But, Oscar, I'm no detective. That's your bag. Steve, you're as good as anybody now. Oscar, oh, Bob, what do you want? We'll catch him. Huh? Catch him. Oh. I see you've become quite a capitalist since I saw you last. Hey, now, wait a minute. This is my boss's car. What's going on, boss? Well, I'm not sure. It could be trouble. Are you the boss of a lot of men in America? No, just one. Me. Well, I've got a boss, sort of. What do you do for a living? Well, I bulldog refrigerators, freezers, major appliances. Doesn't pay too good, does it? Uh, two bills a week. <laughs> You could be making real money instead of working for small change at OSI. And like Austin, don't care about money, O'Flaherty. They care about principle and loyalty in their country. Well, uh, what are you doing in this business? Uh, Goldman's got something on me. Hey, come on, Steve. You trying to tell me you never even thought about using what you are to write your own ticket? And it's so simple. No pay. <laughs> no play. He's just a greedy punk that would do anything for a big car in a fancy apartment. With your image, ex-astronaut. All right, look, I, I can't see myself sitting behind a desk and wearing a tie and all that. Look, you either come up with $100,000 or we'll take care of business elsewhere. What are you doing? What is this? 
It's a roll bar from a dune buggy. I figure if you ever run out of things for me to do, I'll open a machine shop. The things you did on the plane, and even before that, the way you knocked down that door, how do you do it? Oh, sleight of hand, sleight of foot. Dr. Broder, he fascinates a lot of women with those tricks. I, well, I have to rely on my native charm. You know, you're just a heartbreaker. Well, when you got it, pal, you got it. I mean, you know. <laughs> Jimmy. You know, Oscar, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. Don't you ever have a leisurely meal? Only on weekends, pal, and sometimes not even then. You know, Oscar, you look like you could use a vacation. <laughs> you're very funny, pal. I thought I told you. No, what? Well, I'm going fishing for a while. Fishing? Ten days. You've got to be kidding. It's not going to leave me stuck with this. But I want to go fishing, too, sometimes. Got to go, Steve. All right. Yeah, I'll see you later. And thanks for the help, Goldie. I'll have a drink. A water, soda pop, or... Milk. Want some company? Okay, uh, if you don't ask a lot of questions. No, I don't have any questions. I figured you out all by myself. You're mechanically inclined, and you're very strong, and you're well-educated, and you're single. How'd you know that? I'm a woman. You're not one of my men. I sure would like to be. Bye. I just saw something. What? What did you see? I just saw a bottle of wine, flickering candles, and an incredibly beautiful sunset. I really like your visions. You do? Try me. I just might. I have a break coming up in about five minutes. So why don't you go grab that table over by the fireplace and wait for me? Sure. You know, I never really did get your name. Oh, you will. What's that? That is a moonshot. A witch? A little number from the Cape. Guaranteed to keep you in smooth orbit. Steve, this is Oscar. What are you doing? Throwing a wild party up there? Now, Oscar, you knew if I threw a party, you'd be invited. What's with the beer? I was thirsty for something cold. Have you um, been drinking, Colonel Austin? Can you hear me, Mr. Austin? Ted? Ed, it's Ralph. Open up. We got another one for you. How you feeling, pal? A bit fuzzy. How do you feel? Rested. Should get shot more often. Didn't it... Didn't you feel like laughing? Like doing flips? Well, I guess I didn't get enough of it. I haven't felt this way since we all got dysentery, remember? Yeah, I remember. Say, did you ever get married? No. No, not yet. Oh, good. You? Me? Oh, I'm still shopping. Any new romances since your last psychological evaluation? Well, I kind of thought I had something going there for a while, Rudy. The lady just uh, cooled off on me, though. Kind of think she might have found another guy. He's so cute when he frowns, isn't he? Well, I wouldn't say that. Why? Because you're jealous. You mean you're uh, tossing me over for him, huh? No. No. But I really do love you, Steve. Please believe me. Of course I believe you. Doesn't everybody that loves somebody stick a gun in their face? Have you ever thought about the human side of me? Or does that interest you? Tell me something, Colonel. What makes a woman attractive in your world? For me, a woman needs a intelligence, a sense of humor. Physical attributes? Well, every little bit helps. What does that make me? We're talking about a man and a woman and feelings. It makes you like me. Yeah. It's good for people to feel. That's what separates us from machines and some institutions. How does it make you feel? Well, it makes me feel... Uh, a little less alone. What I'm left with is uh, a lot of loneliness. Then why did you go and take a tour of a Moorish castle and take Mr. Goma with you, huh? I've seen Moorish castles. They don't do anything for me. 
What do you say we discuss it in a civilized manner, huh? Over dinner? No. I'll bet your horse likes me. May I ask you another very personal question? Sure. Do you like girls? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, very much. I think they're great fun. In fact, I wanted to take one to the moon with me. There were some experiments I wanted to attempt in a zero-gravity situation, but they wouldn't let me. Now take off your clothes. What? Did the Air Force teach you to rush in like that? No, but they did teach me to uh, carefully select a target and then zero in at top speed. May I touch you? I'm sweaty. Well, I kind of like it. Are you sure you wouldn't rather be sport fishing? I'm all fished out. Oh, is there anything you want good at? Well, I've never had much success at milking reindeer. You aren't taking this very seriously. Well, you told me to enjoy myself. Why must you do this? The guards will kill you. They have their orders and they don't know any other way to stop you. I'll be fine. Can you imagine what it would mean if a group of scientists had Einstein's memory? Or uh, if musicians had the benefit of Chopin's thoughts? Think about it. <laughs> it's, it's too much. Too fast for you to understand, right? May I ask you a question? Shoot. What's the matter with you? Well, doctors say I'm not all here. What's missing? Well, nothing that should prove to be of any problem in our relationship. So you must know how it feels that people look at you and think you're odd and kinky. Sometimes I feel just like you do. <laughs> I want to tell you how much I appreciate your making my stay most enjoyable. Two women, Steve? Do you have any opinion on that? Well, there's no doubt that women check out as good as men on the ground. And I'm sure they'll be fine in space. I guess you've done this a million times before. Never with better company. Why, thank you, Colonel. Mm. You know, it's uh, pretty difficult when you have to compete with men all the time, you know what I mean? Why do you have to? I do suppose you'd be a whole lot nicer to little old me if I was sitting on the port swing just watching the river mosey on by. Maybe. Why do you suppose we never got serious before? It's too scary. Is that just another name you could add to your list? I think you know me better than that. I was stupid to ever let you go to begin with. Well, I kind of thought so, too. Can we really take off like you said? Sure, sure we can. I don't know if this thing's going to work with us. We're going to have so many problems. Yeah, but who doesn't? Hey, you played a little patty fingers with my head nurse there for a while, huh? Well, Rudy, while you were rebuilding me into something other men weren't, Oscar was convincing me that I'd be better and stronger and so forth. Why, Carla was there, you know. What's the matter? Well, I guess you won't be able to look at me like that, will you, knowing how much of me isn't me? I suppose uh, you feel the same way every time you look at me. Are you following me? Just admiring your form. Well, if you help me, I'll make sure that all your debts are wiped clean. Just like that. Well, I'll be glad to pay you off. You think you're going to play with me for pay? <laughs> you can't win them all, huh, Colonel? If I see him once, just once, I will call the police and scream rape. Is something wrong, sir? Uh, yes, my uh, judgment seems to be a little off today. I'll be right down the hall. Good. Stay there. Wow. It's about time you struck out somewhere, Colonel. A friend indeed. Wait a minute. What if she spots me and screams to the local fuzz? Huh. You're a bionic man. Run. I'm really beginning to enjoy all this. Well, I'm glad someone is. Stop worrying, baby. Nothing to be concerned about at all. Steve, I've had a lot of thoughts about you lately. Mostly bad. Something tells me you're gonna make it. Um, 
Do you get up to Aspen very often? I try to get up as often as possible. In Russia, they say all American men are soft. Today we rise to the occasion. What were you trying to say? I think you know. Physically demanding? Over the long haul, yes. Yeah, if I got any openings up there. I mean, if I've got any openings. Sorry, I had to violate your porthole. You all about finished? Yes, I'm finished. You knew all along I was coming with you, didn't you? Yeah. What do you want? How about a towel? Did you have a good time? Yes. I want you to rest now. Then? I'll come back and study you more closely. I mean, we're going to be living together in that space capsule for some time. Well, I guess you're right. We're going to live happily ever after, aren't we? You bet. Are you ready to go now? I've got to. No further questions. And that's the end of your curiosity? My medical curiosity. Thank you both. Good show. Go home. Go home. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Well, I'm glad that's over. That was almost a disaster. Oh, come on, Oscar, wasn't that bad? Did I do it right, Steve? No. I'll drive. What do you think about going next? What well, I'm working on making it up to the little boy's room. Go fool him. <laughs>